Welcome to Atlantic Engineering in beautiful Birkenhead for uh, Yachting Monthly's test of anchor chains. So here's our lab, here are our samples of chain, and here's our expert Vivcox to talk us through it. We have here 13 samples of chain which have been obtained from North Wales chandleries and from some specialist suppliers. At this end of the table we have grade 30 chain uh, which is the lower strength that is commonly used for anchoring and the four at this end are grade 40 chain uh, which are slightly more expensive but should be rather stronger than the grade 30. The intention is uh, I have already measured uh, in the dimensions of these chains to check that they comply with the specification and from now we shall be testing them uh, in a tensile test machine uh, which will determine their ultimate tensile strength. What we have here is a Denison tensile testing machine capable of pulling up to 50 tons. Uh, it consists of the upper jaws here and the lower jaws here. We clamp the chain in between these jaws. This table then moves down and we can measure the uh, strength at which the chain fails on this panel over here. We can also determine the rate at which the, the table is moving down, uh, again off that panel there, and the whole machine is driven hydraulically. The load is now beginning to come on the chain. Uh, the race is being displayed in the, in the lower screen. It takes a little bit of adjustment, but we're working on 140 millimeters a minute. Uh, the load there, measured in kilonewtons, uh, now just past 20, uh, which is uh, just over two metric tons. This is a grade 30 chain, the specification for that is just over 30 kilonewtons, so once this passes 30, we can confidently say that uh, the chain is well within specification. Rate still climbing at a good rate, which, which means that we're not yet approaching the ultimate tensile strength. Once we reach the, uh, an area close to the, to the UTS, uh, the rate will decline and eventually stop, although uh, the pull on the chain will continue until it fractures. This is considerably above the specification figure. The rate is just beginning to decline a little bit now. That seems to be the maximum. Uh, the machine's still pulling the chain. Ah, oh, it's moved on up again. So it seem to be a particularly strong example uh, of the grade 30 chain. All of these have now been pulled in the tensile tester. We've recorded all the results and we can observe that there are three different fracture types and I'll talk about those now. This is a very typical tensile failure in a ductile metal. Uh, the a fracture is known as a cup and cone type, so we have a cone shape there and a cup type there. There's a lot of elongation. Uh, the appearance of the fracture uh, is somewhat uh, known as woody, uh, and that is a very typical ductile fracture. This is a fracture that has taken place immediately adjacent to the weld. Uh, it's also a cup and cone type. There's a, that is a, a cone shape there, and uh, there is the cup there. This is the weld here. So the fracture has taken place uh, in the area that has been heated during the welding operation. Uh, in this example the fracture has taken place immediately at the weld and when we examine these faces uh, with the magnifying glass we can see that there are marks there consistent with where the chain was cropped during the manufacturing process. Uh, this suggests that the welding uh, is incomplete, we have what's known as poor penetration uh, and the metal has never been welded correctly uh, when it was uh, manufactured as a chain. 
Another factor that's important uh, in the testing is that it has highlighted differences in the quality of the galvanizing. Galvanizing applied to steel uh, is not a coating uh, as with a coat of paint, uh, but uh, when it's done correctly, a series of intermetallic compounds develop between the zinc and the iron. Uh, with, uh, with a steadily increasing zinc content as we approach the surface. Uh, this means that when the steel is deformed, the galvanizing should not flake off, but should remain adhered to the surface. Here's a good example. Uh, this has undergone uh, 4.5 tons of force, and the galvanizing is perfectly adhered to the surface of the steel. Conversely, we look at this one, and here the galvanizing has flaked away uh, in several areas such as here. Uh, the, the galvanizing will fall off and it reveals the steel substrate that's beneath. So this has not been galvanized correctly.